the final of the 65th Spengler Cup from Davos here in Switzerland. Hello and welcome to the impressive setting of the Davos Ice Arena here up in the mountains for the final of this year's competition between ZSKA Moscow, the Russian side now newly reformed with the demise of the Soviet Union and the home-based Swiss side here who have the packed capacity crowd behind them, Lugano. That's the first group for the Russian team. Probably their strongest squad there in block one, led by captain and legendary right defenseman Igor Kravchuk. Mikhailovsky, one of two keepers alongside Sergei Naumov. Goldminders for the Russian side here today. So hard to not keep calling them the Soviet side. Defending champions, Spartak Moscow, this a different club side, now grappling with the new realities of sponsorship, advertising and professional sport in the erstwhile Soviet Union. Strength in depth then right through the squad as the sides take to the ice. We'll pick up the key players for you as we get into the action. As we run down the Lugano team. That's uh, their first squad. Tosi and Olivier Anken, the man, the men who will be dividing the goal minding duties between them. And Tosi, we think, will start the match here, but expect Olivier Anken to come in pretty quickly. Well, three players who may be the keys to Lugano's chances of pulling off the title here today are left defenseman Gaston Gingra. They're the number 29 in the third squad going through your picture. They also have two other men beside Gaston Gingra with big-time NHL experience. That's the French-Canadian Gilles Talbudeau and the left-wing Swede, Kent Nielsen. So we're ready to face off in the first period. It's the Russian side who are playing from right to left in the red strip. Away we go. And Lugano in possession. To tell you very briefly, at the end of the round-robin series of matches where the five competing club sides went against each other head-to-head, -head, we had a three-way tie at the top between Lugano, Team Canada and the Muscovites and Team Canada just losing out on goal difference. And another important fact is Lugano have already beaten ZSKA Moscow, first shot on goal from the Lugano side. Lugano already beat the Muscovites in the round-robin series, that coming in game number 10 by five goals to four. Will that, I wonder, prove to be a psychological advantage? First touch for Didier Tossi, the Lugano goalminder. Right defenseman Anders Elderbrink trying to get something going. Played in across the face of Mikhailovsky's goal. Nobody there on the end of it. So both sides just sparring and feeling each other out in this first period. Number 26, Andrei Kovalenko. ZSKA Moscow here under the tutelage and trainership of Viktor Tifonov, 20 years at the top in Russian ice circles. John Sletvol, the trainer for the opposition here, Lugano, who've made the short trip down from their lakeside setting coming up to the mountains of eastern Switzerland 7,000 fans inside the Davos Ice Center and our first penalty offense coming early in the match for Tony there the Lugano man is into the sin bin and that's causing a rearrangement Tony. In fact, they had too many players on the ice, is the offence. So that's a tactical slip by John Sletvolk coming after a couple of minutes play. 
too many players on the ice. Lugano, Tony goes off, and they're penalised now. Two minutes. The man down. So the advantage with the Russians in the red. Down beneath us. Now the goalkeeper has been caught into serious action so far, but the first. Anxious moments coming in now for the Swiss as the Muscovites go for the press. Slap shot from the right defenceman. That's the captain, Igor Kravchuk. And an anxious couple of minutes now for Lugano. too far wide at the moment the Swiss then pen back defending their goal and surely only a matter of time and there it is well they'd had two attempts from long range and the first goal comes in of the period and indeed of the final and this was how it happened Chibarev the number 29 picking up the rebound there and had enough time in front of goal just to play in the dummy block there from the goal minder and through the legs of the last defense and there it was 1-0 the Muscovites lead Chibadov the scorer and that coming just after three and a half minutes have been played in the first period and the uh, Swiss side really making life difficult for themselves early on in the game. They didn't want to concede an early goal. And Slipfall will be unhappy and anxious about that. It came when the Swiss were caught with too many players out on the ice. And when they went down to four men, the ZSKA Moscow side took full advantage as Chibotov fired the visitors ahead. Now it's Oliver Anken who came in to the action when we saw that man banished to the sin bin for the offence of having one too many players out on the ice and as we suspected Didier Torzi hasn't lasted more than a couple of minutes and in comes the number 35, the second goal minder, Olivier Anken. Had no chance with the goal, Lugano then trailing here in the first period. That was a more crucial touch from the number 35 to deflect the long-range effort there from the left-hand defenceman. Sergei Zubov. Well, the early days of this competition, believe it or not, saw Oxford University helped by a strong Canadian contingent as the initial winners. They were a force to be reckoned with back in the late 20s and early 30s. And they had a certain Lester Pearson in the side, a future Prime Minister of Canada. Last one, the trophy, Oxford, in 1932. Last time, the side from Great Britain were victorious here in Davos. That 1932 side, including Clarence Campbell, a Rhodes Scholar and Oxford undergraduate, who went on to become the third ever president of the National Hockey League in North America. One or two of the old boys from the pre- and post-war era are here today for this final, the 65th anniversary of the Spengler Cup, the oldest ice hockey team tournament in Europe. And they were telling me about those early days when the Oxford University players used to travel down to London twice a week by bus to practice something of the old Corinthian spirit there, where the locker room motto at Oxford that burned into every student's mind was a healthy mind means a healthy body. So our two finalists here today, the ZSKA Moscow side, used to be the club army side in Moscow in the days of the Soviet Union, 
that's now history. And they've come here with, as we said, sponsors and a new professional outlook as the Russian ice hockey players, some of the finest in the world, move into the modern era. Now, I think the referee may be calling for a penalty there. Vostrikov, and it's for slashing as he goes into the sin bin. Sergei Vostrikov, the Moscow number 18, and Sut has gone in there with him, and that's for excessive roughness. So that little clash there sees both sides lose a player for the penalty period. Taken down by Anken, and the puck goes dead. As Thibaudot, we were telling you about him at the start of the program. Slet Vol at the moment, the Lugano team chief, just waiting for the optimum moment to bring Thibaudot into the action. Gilles Thibaudot from Montreal, seven years in the NHL at Montreal. And the New York Islanders and the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's worn all three club colours in the NHL from 1984 through to last year. Moscow it is then in the first period, leading by one goal to nil. That goal coming after three and a half minutes from Igor Chibarov, when the Russian side had a man advantage. And at the moment, Lugano guilty of giving the puck away. And rather penned in their own half of the rink, unable to put any pressure on Mikhailovsky, who had seen the puck for at least the last five minutes. So both sides now back to a full complement of players. The penalty period has ticked by without a goal. So back to six aside, five outfield players there out on the ice. As the Russians continue to play a little cat and mouse with their Swiss host. This is good play. Cross shot touched away by Olivia Anken, who's been busy in this first period. In action again, and another clash in front of the Swiss goal, and this may well be another penalty as the referee sorts it out. Gaston Gingra there with his back to us, the number 29. That's the man in trouble, I think. Referee quickly between them. Shinga, another French-Canadian in the Lugano colours today with NHL experience, over 10 years that gathered at Montreal and the Maple Leafs in Toronto. And our friend Viktor Tikhonov. First time I think we've ever seen him at a major ice hockey event without a three-piece suit. He's now got a very smart sponsor's anorak on today. That's a sign of the times behind the former Iron Curtain. The bell, the number 24 for Lugano. Five teams then entered this tournament. The 65th Spengler Club. Every year here in Davos, it was Moscow, Malmö, Team Canada, Mannheim from Germany and Lugano. End of the first period, 1-0 to the Russians. Lugano then a goal down after the first period. That goal coming from Chibarov after just three and a half minutes play. The home fans hoping for something better from Lugano as we start the second in the face-off circle. Spartak Moscow, as we said, winners the last two years of this competition, but prior to that, in 1988, it was Team USA. So it hasn't been a clean sweep in previous years for the East Europeans by any means at all. Indeed, Team Canada were also twice successful back in the mid-80s. 
be very interesting indeed to see how the Russians now adapt to the new climate of professional sport and having to pay their way without the feather bedding of the old Soviet Ice Hockey Federation behind them. Well, the uh, Moscow club side do have a sponsor. It's uh, a Russian entrepreneur who's involved in the forestry business. He's putting some money behind this new look Moscow side. In the red here today, who lead by a goal to nil. They have a problem, however, at the start of the second. As into the sin bin goes the number... Eight, is it? Yes, it is. It's the center, Maslenikov. Two minutes then for Maslenikov as the Russian side go down to four outfield players and a chance now for Lugano. They must utilize these two minutes to find an equalizer. It was when Lugano themselves were guilty being caught with one too many men on the ice in the first period that the Russians took the lead thanks to Chibarov's goal following the power play now Lugano must produce something similar they have the men advantage they're in possession here in the white long range effort slapped away by Michalowski in the Russian goal and back it comes again kick on off beneath us anxiously watches the clock Maslenikov's offence holding as he clashed with the Swiss player and use of an elbow as well I thought in there lucky not to get penalty for roughing but holding is the offence Maslenikov in the sin bin Russians defending a slender one goal lead here in the second period over the Moscow goal, the whistle's gone. Mikhailovsky hasn't really been tested so far in the Moscow goal, the goal minder. So much experience right through this Russian side. Away we go again. And at the moment, the spark missing from the Swiss. They're not creating any openings. They're really not putting the Moscow side under real pressure as they should. And the whistle's gone for that. Hooking, perhaps, was it, from... Bertagia beneath us is being called back to the referee, may get a penalty here. Sandro Bertagia. There he goes, the number two. Is off for that offence. Hooking indeed is his offence flashed up on the electronic scoreboard above the spectators here in Davos. This was why it happened. So the Muscovites bringing on the big players for a period now which sees them with the man advantage and looking to turn their numerical superiority into a second goal. The big players are out there now. Sergei Zubov, 21-year-old, who's contracted for the New York Rangers for the coming season. We've got five players here today in Davos with... A draft contract, it, contract in their pockets for the coming NHL season. And now it's power play time from the Russians. And the Swiss desperately defending that goal of Olivier Anken. Centre right in front of the net, choosing to play without a helmet. It's easy to kick out.
to the guard. Got a real chance here. Broken up by the Swiss. Living on their nerves at the moment. Man back on the ice. Penalty period over then. Bentagia rejoins the fray. But back come the Russians. Broken up by Dominicioni. And that hasn't gone very far. And there it is, a second for the Russians. I thought for a second the referee was going to rule it out. Celebrations then as goal number two goes in. And we told you the big boys were out on the ice. And it's from Sergei Zubov, the number three. The left defence man snaps up a simple chance here it came from the rebound just a couple of yards and in fact it was straight in from Zubov it didn't need the help of the centre in front of the unguarded net 21 year old Muscovite then on his way to join the New York Rangers in the next NHL draft and immediately the Lugano side come under renewed pressure Suddenly, Moscow have the bit between their teeth now, too, looking instantly for a third. 2-0 in the second period. CSKA lead Lugano in the final of this year's Sprengler Cup. Face off to the right of the Swiss goal. Critical period now for Sledfold's men. Still, they have to score quickly in this second period. They could so easily be swept aside by the Moscow club team. And half a yard quicker at the moment out on the ice. The men in red suddenly now in full flow. Forward they come once again. Leading by two goals to nil. Chibarov in the first period. After three and a half minutes, Subov in the second. A couple of moments ago. Right across the front of Anker's goal. Offered no protection at all there. By the last line of defence, Lugano now living dangerously. It's the man who's just served the penalty period, Tadjia. And a third goes in. Protest towards the referee, led by Pertagia. He'll have to be careful. Having just served that two-minute ban for hooking. It's number three, however, for the Soviets. Petrov, I think, is the scorer. Good play here from Oleg Petrov. There he was, taking it round from behind the net. And doing it all on his own, without an assist. Third goal then coming in for CSKA Moscow. And Petrov confirmed on the score caption. And suddenly in the space of a couple of minutes, it's gone from one to three. And Lugano now with their backs to the wall. Well, Batagia didn't like it, led the Lugano protest hard really from here to see what he was complaining about. It seemed a perfectly valid goal. Against the name of the number 14, Oleg Petrov. <laughs> Petrov, the right winger, then taking the ball, the puck through alone behind the net and slipping it beneath keeper Olivier Anken. And the Russians in. Complete control at the moment out there on the ice. But still a long way to go in this final for the Spengler Cup. Dimitri Mironov. 
Puck is back for icing. Face off just beneath us. Logano in a familiar position on the defensive, but here in possession of the puck. Off the backboards, whistle's gone. It's offside. Tikhonov must be pretty happy at this stage in the match. So the big uh, players have put the pressure on for two minutes in which Lugano cracked, conceded two further goals. Off comes Sergei Zubov. Andrei Kovalenko, another 21-year-old on his way to join the Quebec Nordique club side in the NHL. Chance, perhaps, well, good play by Mikhailovsky once again. Smothers the puck. Shooting opportunities few and far between for the Swiss. They need to take everyone that comes their way. Try to get it through the legs of Michalowski. He's too experienced for that. Shot coming in from, I think it was the number 12, Robert Lavnia. And that's what they're playing for here this year in Davos. This wonderful setting up in the Swiss mountains, up the valley from Kour. Klosters just down the road, familiar to British skiers. Some of the finest skiing in all Europe here in the Davos, Klosters, Arosa area. And Lugano, I'm afraid, have conceded another one. The big three is really being put on the Swiss now by the Moscow side in full flow. And number four from it's Chibarov, scorer from the first period at a second. Here it is. The number 29 is through, unopposed. All the time in the world to draw Olivier Anken. And the goalminder left completely exposed here. Chibarev on the break. And in the second period, it's the Moscow side who now lead Lugano by four goals to nil. Welcome back to the ice hall here in Davos. Still in the second period. And you see here the side in red, Moscow leading by four goals to nil, close to a fifth there as the puck flies just over the Lugano crossbar and at the moment the Swiss side finding themselves bereft of answers to contain the CSKA Moscow side as Tikhonov has once again perhaps with a little kidology lulled the other club teams in competition here through the round robin he saved his best cards to last in this final the russians whatever we want to call them now no longer the soviets but still a superb side in ice hockey terms perhaps the one nation everybody will want to beat chibarov has two moscow have four and lugano at the moment have no answer to tikonov's men a happy Russian bench there in this second period face off down beneath us a chance perhaps for Lugano to craft something Mikhailovsky has held everything that's come his way the first string goal minder for the Muscovites Might be a little bit of high sticking there. It is off Tiabriov. He's off the ice. He'll have a two-minute penalty. Artur of Tiabriov. It's one of the more interesting characters in this Lugano side. Steve Isuria. even going a man down it's still Moscow who are so quick on the break one disappointment for the Swiss fans here who've gone very quiet I have to say in the last five minutes or so where they've seen the Russians craft three more goals is this man now in possession Kent Nielsen the number four 
The left wing has been very subdued indeed. And looks a rather resigned figure at the moment. Out on the far side of the rink. Now beneath us, the number three, Anders Elderbrink. The left defence man. They must bring Nielsen more into the play. The Swede has been completely out of it here as we come to the midpoint in this second period. More pressure at last being exerted by the Lugano side. But it's always the final pass at the moment that's missing. And Nielsen, who's played eight years in the NHL for the Calgary Flames, the Minnesota North Stars, and indeed has had his hands on the Stanley Cup when he was playing in the colours of the Edmonton Oilers. Well, he's no stranger to the big time, is he? But today, in front of the loyal Swiss fans, has been a major disappointment for Lugano's hopes of causing an upset here and taking the trophy, and they go another goal down. And that was Russian play, really, characteristic of the last 20, 25 years in which they've dominated this sport. They've got plenty of support here inside the ice hall in Davos. It's five now, and number five coming in from Chibarov, who has a hat-trick. Three in this match already from Ivan Chibarov. There he is, taking the congratulations of the crowd. Ivan, did I call him? Sorry, it's Igor. Igor Chibarov. So a great second period now, as the Russians, in total command, stretch their lead. 5-0 Lugano. Well, stunned, really, rolled over by the red machine. They've conceded four in ten minutes in this second period. And that breakout, even when the Russians were a man down after Oktyabryov had gone into the sin bin for high-sticking. They continue to outthink and outmanoeuvre the Swiss players who look, well at times, a yard slow and now another chance, well close to number six, spurned by the Russians, Govalenko, the 21-year-old right winger, Vladimir Malakov, another man on his way to join the New York Islanders. John Slipfall not happy at all, taking his frustration out on the match officials. But really, I think at the end of this second period, he's got to get his troops together. And that's where the blame lies. Easy to point the accusing finger at the referees. Always the Aunt Sally's a sport, aren't they? At the moment, Lugano down, but not yet buried, trailing by five goals to nil. Olivia Ankin will smother the puck. So he's been preferred to Didier Tossi for much of this final. Tossi started the action for the first couple of minutes in period one only. Olivia Ankin's not done too much wrong. You can see how the Swiss now have lost all their early fervour as they've to witness a mean performance from the Russian side which has humbled Lugano and put the dampener on this Spengler Cup final hoping so much of course the locals for the victory from the Lugano side they've brought a lot of travelling support with them up into the mountains from their superb lakeside setting Lugano making ground. Here's Nielsen switching to this near side. Slap shot. Blocked by Mikhailovsky. Now, has Nielsen, I wonder, reawakened his appetite? Stung by criticism. His lacklustre display in the first period certainly had 
trainer John Sletvolt looking to galvanise his side for this second period, but who would have thought they'd come out and concede four quick goals as they have? And with that position, perhaps their chance has well and truly gone here out on the ice. Well, comebacks of this sort have been seen before in the NHL. And in ice hockey terms, this fastest team sport in the world can all turn around very quickly indeed. Let's not write Lugano off just yet. Still a lot of ice hockey to be played here in this final. And as Elder Brink has seen plenty of the action, good stick control once again from the number three, the left defensive man. Picking it up, Andy Torn. It has to go backwards. Bruno Roger, the captain, urging his men on. That's with the number six, Patrick Sutter. Andre Rutteli. There's a different dimension about the Russians' play when they get into the final third of the rink, no doubt about it, in front of Olivier Anken's goal. Incisive, quick-thinking, imaginative, and that's why they lead here in the second period by five goals to nil. Sergei Zubov going off. And Mostrykov has a penalty for holding. So a two-minute penalty puts the Muscovite side down to four outfield players. And another renewed opportunity for Lugano to make the advantage count. This time, perhaps, at last they can get on the score sheet as we come towards the end of the second period here. Muddled play once again. Now they rebuild and launch another attack over on the far side. In goes Nielsen. No way back. And the Russians have it again. Steal the puck. Oh, so quick on the break. Just heard that one ping against the framework of the goal as the puck came in something approaching 70 miles an hour great defensive play once again from Sergei Zubov six feet tall 187 pounds born in Moscow still only 21 no wonder the New York Rangers have put him into their draft for the new NHL season now the goal's off its moorings, the whistle's gone, and Mikhailovsky's down. But Lugano denied once again, and that was great defensive cover from Sergei Zubov, the number two, getting back there to deny the Swiss as they broke up the right-hand side of the ice. Look at that, he's two yards behind the pace, just gets in a despairing dive as Mikhailovsky goes down, but midway through the second period here, it's the Russians who lead by five goals to nil. Welcome back. There's an injury to the Russian goldminder, who continues to receive treatment down there on the ice. We hope nothing too serious. Maxim Mikhailovsky, who's been a tower of strength, at one end for his side in the first couple of periods while at the other it's Igor Chibarov with a hat-trick that's given his side the advantage they lead by five goals to nil as a shaken Mikhailovsky resumes the goal minding position dons the protective gear and is we hope fit to continue in this final Zubov, concerned, asking questions of the goalminder. 
this is third and final season with the side from the capital of the new Russian Federation that's Yevgeny Davidov we're looking at there 24 years old from Chelyabinsk will be playing for the Winnipeg Jets if they exercise their option on the draft choice to take him into the NHL next season. So Lugano in the wide, in possession, with a man advantage. Still they can't find a way through the ball deflects, the puck deflects off the skates of the goalminder. The referee gets in between Eberle, the 24, and the number two is Maslenikov, who's already been in the sin bin for a holding offence at the start of this period. And there's the man from Japan. Tsuchirara. Well dazed or not, Mikhailovsky got enough on that shot to divert the puck just over the framework of the goal. Back it came from Freddy Lutti. And then the whistle. And Jörg Eberle is into the sin bin for slashing. Kravchuk joins him for a cross check. That's the Russian captain. So both sides down a man as the captain Kravchuk gives his version of events but he won't mind too much with that score illuminated above the players here on the electronic scoreboard he knows that Moscow are looking comfortable here at 5-0 Lugano then looking to find some consolation and perhaps prevent total humiliation can they I wonder at last in this second period find a way through and get on the score sheet Buck just away from Nielsen when in a good position there really lack of control from the Swede They're almost toying with the Russians now, but still they can't find a way through. And now it's Sajira who's in some trouble. Well, despite all that padding and the helmet and protective gear, Sajira from Japan is going to require some attention. And that was Dmitry Motkov there involved. And in fact, he's going to be penalised for that slashing with the stick. You saw that across the back of the ankles of the Lugano man. And that was quite unnecessary. Sitting pretty at 5 mil. The crowd unhappy with that. A little bit of roughhouse tactics there from the Russians. Well, they're cruising it really in this final. And that's a sad sight to see at any sporting level. So Giura is escorted off the ice. And Dmitry Motkov, the number 21, is off for a penalty period. Let's hope that Sergiura is not too severely injured. better view of that earlier on from our camera position behind Mikhailovsky's goal and that was brutal then goes some ice bruised ribs by the look of it unnecessary Dmitry Motkov souring this final which has been played 
in a fairly good spirit up to now. We haven't seen any mass brawls. As the Russians have really let their stick do the talking for them on that occasion. Well, Mokhov's stick certainly wasn't making contact with the puck. And quite rightly penalised for the misconduct. Potential flashpoint there, but we continue with the action. Lugano on the break. Shot comes in and at last they find a way through. The puck eludes Maxi Mikhailovsky. He's beaten at last. 5-1, no more than a consolation. And it comes from Biakin. At last the Swiss supporters have something to cheer. Ilya Biyakin, the number seven. Well, he's normally down on the team sheets as a left winger, but there he was switching to the right. And a low shot that just eludes goalminder Mikhailovsky. He may still be feeling the effects of that tumble he took a few moments ago. There's one man who certainly is. Sugiura continues to receive attention to what must be a very painful back or perhaps it's ribs. No, even the bench doesn't know. So the player himself unsure of just where in fact the injuries occurred, maybe a dislocation there, got something off he said, you heard that quite clearly from our camera position. <laughs> Confirmation of the consolation goal for the Lugano side from Liakin. as nails Viktor Tikhonov the Moscow coach and as things have just got out of hand in the last few moments it began really with Dmitry Motkov slashing there on the Lugano man which caused as we saw Tijura to leave the ice for continued attention to what may be a serious injury let's hope not given Lugano the opportunity to get back in the match with a goal at 5-1 and now Vladimir Malakov is off for a misconduct penalty and he's going to have to face 10 minutes in the sin bin, a 10 minute penalty then against the Muscovite the number 7 of Vladimir Malakov has a 10 minute misconduct penalty this perhaps the best chance for Lugano now if they can find a couple of quick goals to reduce the arrears. They'll be keen to get on with things at the end of the second period, their best opportunity as the Russians have lost some discipline. And the Swiss have refound their voice. Play back from behind the boards by Ebele. Now back on the ice. Snap shot from Anders Elderbrink. Left defenseman. And down the boards it goes. As the Russians regather, draw deep breath, and Lugano come back at them in another attacking wave again. Back to the point man, Elderbrink. We'll try one from there. The crowd roars, but certainly it was Mikhailovsky's all the way as he smothers the puck. Refuses to be intimidated. Yes, 
Well, let's hope it's not serious than uh, a strain, perhaps. So Giuro was just winded there. As he felt the full force of Motkov's slashing attack hit the ice with some force a few moments ago. Meanwhile, play continues. The Russian side down a man, Malakov, in the sin bin for misconduct. Still eight and a half minutes left on that penalty. Nagano trailing by five goals to one. But uh, given a lift, thank, thanks to the Yakin shot that went home two minutes ago. Now they're playing with more verve and vigor. Tikhonov wanting to reshape the pack once again. Shuffling the troops. Kovalenko, Lenikov, Davidov, Sergei Zubov, Captain Kravchuk. Once again at critical points in this final, that wily old fox Tikhonov putting out his best players when he deems it most appropriate. This could be a crucial session now for the Moscow side. They lead here, don't forget, by five goals to one. Coming under pressure, perhaps for the first time in this match. And you see now how the Swiss are suddenly hungry for the puck. Coming down to the final 10 seconds then of the second period. A period that began with Moscow leading by the solitary goal. Well, five more we've seen go home in this second spell. And it now means Moscow will go into the third period leading Lugano by five goals to one. There's Mahuda at the end of the second. We'll be back after this short break for the third and final period from Davos. Welcome back as we face off at the beginning of the third period here with CSKA Moscow leading Lugano by five goals to one. Well, we were suggesting before the break that the outcome of this year's Spengler Cup may now be a formality. But it's got altogether rougher and tougher in the last few moments of that second period, as you saw, with the serious misconduct penalty against Vladimir Malakov and the unfortunate injury to the American Japanese Steve Tsujiura. So into the third and final period here in the Davos Ice Hall and at 5-1 have Lugano given themselves any way back into this the final match of the series the five teams who came into this competition, Team Canada, Malmö from Sweden, and Mannheim representing Germany, who have been put out in the round robin series, leaving Lugano and the Russians here in the red strip to contest the final 60 minutes of action. At the start of the final period, the Moscow side have put on their fifth block. Goryujuk, Leschov, Salamatin, Octavio. Yakin, who was the scorer of the Lugano consolation goal coming at the end of that second period. And into the sim bin goes Domeniconi for excessive roughness, two-minute penalty for the number 19. 
from the Swiss side. And Maslenikov joins him for cross-checking. So are we, I wonder, in for another open spell of play with both teams minus a man out there on the ice. So it's playing from right to left in this final period. Torrid time in the Lugano goal for Olivia Anken, who's seen five go past him already. Break on now for Lugano. It was a nothing effort. for a shot on target from for me the outstanding player on the ice here this afternoon Sergei Tubov and the defence man gets back quickly to snuff out the danger from Lugano's goal scorer on the far side there at the number 7 Biakin body checking from Deltaggio, he's already been in the wars and the Simbin in this final. Prepared to mix it up once again here down beneath us as Gaston Gingras, the French Canadian professional, goes in search of his stick. And that's once again well covered by Olivia Anken. Kills the puck and stops the play. Tikhonov, still with plenty to say. Very proud, I can tell you, of that sponsor's jacket. He's been given for this the 65th Spengler Cup from Davos here in the Swiss Alps. has gone once again and once again the reason being that Olivia Enken has the puck safely in that goal minding bit more freedom of travel now coming in with the breakup of the old Soviet Union allowing the Moscow club side to enjoy plenty of vocal support here today in Davos. Not too sure what they're doing for hard currency up here in the Swiss Alps, but uh, enjoying every moment of this final, I'm sure. Now with the freedom to travel to major sporting events worldwide. Switching from end to end here. Oh, how did that one stay out? I think it was against the inside of the left-hand post and across the... Must have run right across the goal line. The referee having to quickly get in between number 11, Luti, Freddy Luti. And this was how close the Russian side were to number six. It was indeed against that... There, the right-hand post, left hand as the Russians looked at it. Just screwing across the face of goal. Somebody playing hooky from school, perhaps, here in Davos. He doesn't want to be recognised by our cameras.
So can Lugano now rest the initiative and get the puck away from the Russians at the moment? CSKA just happy to play it around amongst themselves and sit on their lead. But an early goal here in the third and final period might just set us up for a real grandstand finale. On the burst, down the ice, goes the Lugano right winger of Gilles Thibaudot. We haven't seen too much of him. The man from Montreal with big NHL experience with the Canadians, the New York Islanders and the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's had a disappointing final here. Gilles Thibaudot along with Gaston Gingras and Kent Nielsen, the three NHL experienced men in the Lugano side who've been kept pretty quiet by the Russians. Tikhonov laid his tactics well and knew all about the threat that came from the Swiss side. That's been negated and nullified here today. Tikhonov, the fox, the master tactician, looks very much as if he's taking the Moscow club side here to victory. In the third year in succession that a Moscow side has won this international team ice hockey tournament, Spartak Moscow the previous two years, emerging victorious. <laughs> Two-minute penalty for cross-checking Vladimir Malakov not for the first time into the sin bin. Two-minute penalty then against the Russians and a face-off to the left of Mikhailovsky's goal. Well, Chibarov written the headlines for this hat-trick with goals in first and second periods. But for me, Mikhailovsky's been outstanding in the goal-minded position. You get a great view there of you can see really how he had that shot covered all the way and there was no venom in the effort from the Lugano player and from that position you just get some idea of the dizzying speed at which this game is played what a rigorous and demanding sport this is Nielsen have to come back. Well, he's down on the team sheets to play up the left for Lugano, but he can see more down the right flank here in this final match. Torn as the Swiss still without the injured Sujiura in this final spell. And back it goes to Freddy Lutti. Play switches to the left flank. Misunderstanding. Lutti picks it up once again. Finds a, it's a great uh, pass inside. And that's a fine goal for Lugano. And it's a second for the number seven, Biakin. But it was an intelligent and incisive through pass from Freddy Luti. Regained possession here, the Lugano man checks inside, looks up, assesses the options. That's a great pass. And the puck, Taylor made there into the path of Biakin to fire home the second for Lugano. Just what they needed at the start of the third period. And now Moscow lead by five goals to two. And perhaps the pick of the seven we've seen so far just took a deflection off the inside of that right hand upright. And indeed it wouldn't have mattered. The ball was already over the line and there was a player following up to make certain. So too for Biakin. Ilya Biakin. Left-sided attacking player found himself there in the centre's position but the assist to Freddy Luti from Lugano. And that may just give hope and heart to coach John Slethold. The Swede will be looking 
for one final effort here from his troops. They've got it back to 5-2. Now, if they can find another goal from somewhere fairly quickly in this third and final period, we could set ourselves up for a grandstand finale. And as Elderbrink's had a good game. Unhappy with the attentions he's receiving there. Was Jörg Ebele. Ebele once again picks it up. And the Russians may just be made to pay for a little casual play in this third period as they sat back on the lead at 5-1. Trying to make the game safe, they've conceded one. And there's Mikhailovsky sprawling once again on the ice to deny Ebele. He keeps driving forward. No whistle. That attack broken up by Luti. Seems to be everywhere at the moment. Lugano, they've got men forward here. But having to check and go backwards was Andy Torn. And with the job all but completed, Tikhonov just rings the changes once again to play out the final few moments. Oleg Petrov goes into the sin bin for slashing. So one last effort now for Lugano with the man advantage. Four plays five in the outfield out there on the ice here in the Davos Ice Haller. Scramble in front of the Russian goal. Mikhailovsky out of position and stretched once again. Elderbrink waiting for a pass here at the bottom of your picture. The Swiss playing it around the backboards, probing for an opening. Got a man up, don't forget here. Comes back in front of goal. Might be looting everybody. Forward goes Luti and Ebele combining. Now, some of the Lugano players and the fans unhappy. Play was halted there. Freddy Lutti wants to know why. It'll be, it'll be a face-off. Russians have their hat-trick hero, Chibarov, back out on the ice. Coming into the final phase of this third period. And Mikhailovsky, who's conceded one, determined not to concede another. And uh, Tiko not making his point with a gesture that needs no translation. A smile for our cameras as well. Great ambassador for Russian ice hockey over the years familiar figure at Ice Arena all around the world. Olympics, world events, championships with both club and country. Looking as if he's about to score another success here today.
and see the CSKA Moscow side lift the Spengler Cup. Swiss dispossessed. That one came back from the top of the crossbar with Olivia Anken beaten. And the Muscovites showing they can turn it on when they want to, having relaxed for a spell here in the third. Milovsky at full stretch. And needs to recover quickly, smothers the puck with help there from the defenseman, the number 22, Leschov. Maslenikov. It's been a tower of strength at the back today for Moscow. Well, the crowd will cheer both sides on to the final hooter face off to the right of the Russian goal Moscow in possession giving it away back goes Patrick Sutter and he in turn guilty of an error now Logano can bring it away down the left off target, second shot comes in, down goes Michalowski. Stretch for a second there. But Lugano, when they've had the opportunity, failing once again to make it count. Oberlin, none too pleased with things, nonplussed. There, the number 24. who's done more than most to attempt a reversal in fortunes in this third and final period. And the Russians now close to celebrating further success here in Davos for this year. And there it is, the final hooter. It's handshakes all round as the Russians take to the ice and celebrate their success at this year's Spengler Cup from Davos. They have beaten the Swiss side. Lugano finishes runners-up. Conclusive, the final scoreline, five goals to two. The undoubted star of the Russian side, Chibarov, with that hat-trick. We'll leave you with that final score caption and from everybody here in the Swiss Alps. Bye-bye.